Many of us have people that we care about in our lives, and it's because they give us a sense of meaning beyond the world that we live in, perhaps. They have a sense of intuition, a sense of intuitive care and emotion toward you that the rest of the world does not necessarily give to you. And it's that thought behind the gift that really tells you about their love behind the world, behind themselves, that inner self that you are seeking beyond just the physical appearance. It's the love that people are looking for in this world often, and they may even seek it through technology. They may even seek it through AI and what is coming of this world. But is that true love? Is that really what matters? Well, what does it really mean to say it's the thought that counts? I think it will really answer all the questions here in this great article written by Michael Morse Jr. from EvolvingSeeds.com. Let's get into it. Most of us have heard the phrase, it's the thought that counts, but what does that really mean? When someone says this phrase in a genuine context, what they mean is that no matter what happened, the other person or people invested a significant amount of consideration into them or the situation. It means that regardless of how things may have ended up, those who were doing the thinking had the best intentions and were actively thinking of others. It is easy with the lack of activism we see in most people to become disappointed or even disenfranchised. I mean, you know, I make video content, not everybody makes video content. Now, I'm not expecting everybody to make video content, but generally speaking, I do know know that people want a better world and if they want a better world there are requirements and therefore there are things we might have to do in a sense if now is the time to act now is the opportunity to grasp and instead we want to distract ourselves and not do it see things have seemingly gotten much worse in the world and we can see about the same amount of solutions focused activism as we have always seen this is because most people have been encouraged and trained not to think so the thoughts cannot count. The average person has lost touch with what it means to think about or empathize with others on a humanitarian scale. Thinking about others in a deep and profound way, being considerate of how our space affects the space of others, cordial, polite, accommodating. These characteristics shape our activism and our lives. When conversing with individuals about various topics, we should not judge them for not being more of an activist or the kind of activist we are or the kind of activist we want them to be. It is important to recognize that activism is a very broad spectrum and no one can cover every aspect individually. This is, it's the thought that counts. If someone shows an intentional lack of consideration for themselves and others with regard to activism, that's when they are part of the problem. So it's not that you have to worry about, oh, am I doing this, am I doing that? It's that if you care to begin with, because a lot of people just don't care to begin with, and that can be seen as the problem within itself. So to be able to verify through one's actions that they have put at least some thought into the content of their mind and heart is a clear sign that they can be worked with. One does not have to pick up trash as a hobby, as evolving seeds activists do, if they are progressively responsible for their own trash. One does not have to go out and feed all the homeless people every week. Occasionally helping one person or a few people a month is better than nothing, and it's the thought that counts. So, right, you just do something. You do something to make the world a better place. You're, you're doing your part. You're providing your skill sets. I can only do so much. I'm a facilitator. I know who I am. I'm a media content creator. But I know what I can do, what I can't do. And I know that I also can set my mind to anything. If I want to do something, I'll do it. And so I also don't limit my possibility, however. Okay, so these are all just things to bear in mind. Don't set yourself in a box. I say this often through a lot of my videos. Don't put your mind in a box. Don't put your action in the box, but do something and don't be afraid to speak your mind and do what you feel must be done. Okay, but also be conscious of it. Yes, take a step back before you do it. Think about your actions before you do it, but don't be afraid to do it if you know it should be done. Blindly and selfishly accepting or advocating society as it stands reveals a total lack of critical thinking. Too many aspects of social concern impact everyone for anyone to be complacent about them. 
Often in activist circles, we say we have more respect for our enemy than one who does not care. And the reason why that's seen is because the people who are creating that world that a lot of people don't want to be created is because they actually care about what they're doing. They're putting all their time and heart and mind investment into it. And so even the most avid statist, we may say, one that supports or believes in the concept of government, one that supports slavery, they're mentally enslaved, they don't realize it, it's a psychological tendency that I've detailed a lot on my channel. They at the very least have thought about the various components of important issues and world topics even if their conclusions were distorted. Those who do not care, not always but usually, have not given enough thought to have come to an accurate conclusion about how to proceed moving forward, or they would care. It is the complacency of the masses that enables the tyranny of evil men. Therefore, it is incumbent upon everyone who considers themselves to be decent people to thoughtfully probe the nature of their relation to the goings-on of mankind. Do their thoughts, emotions, and or actions increase equity and morality or decrease it? The thought that counts most, however, is the thought that there are thoughts to be thought that don't necessarily benefit us immediately. The consideration of others is not all that makes us decent people. Following through determines success, but it surely separates us from the true savages of the world. Those who do not spare a thought for the suffering of others, the increasing injustice, and those who do not care about the conditions of their immediate external and internal environments are hardly civilized, let alone enlightened. The inability to identify the source of suffering and properly empathize with one's own suffering and or the suffering of others is a clear sign that someone is under heavy mind control possibly to the point of being a secondary psychopath. These secondary psychopaths were not born psychopathic, but became secondary psychopaths by a way of deliberate and forced indoctrination and the resulting schism that is bred from the collision between the indoctrination and the cognitive dissonance one naturally experienced when a sentient being lives a lie. The thoughts that count are the ones that liberate us from our own ego so that we can experience hard truth without the associated blame and shame game that the uninitiated play with themselves. What thoughts have you thought that were at least seemingly original thoughts to you? What thoughts have you thought or do you think that were not patented, packaged, and then shipped into your brain? What work have you done with your own mind that did not include the approval of strangers made into peers or authorities? What did you learn that is not being taught? What have you learned from within yourself based on the world around you? Have you critically assessed yourself? Have you checked yourself? What thoughts do you have that you would consider counting toward your true personal growth outside of your perceived socio-economic status? Who do your thoughts benefit most? Do your thoughts omit you from culpability in many important personal and social ways? If you do not hold and modify deeply held convictions about important personal and social affairs, then you have been mentally, emotionally, and spiritually lobotomized. Our intention with this is to plant the seeds of doubt in the preconceived notions individuals may have about the way they truly operate in the world they live in. To ask the question, are you a good person, and what makes you think that you're a good person, good person does not mean you always cater to others or consider them. It means that you think or consider their suffering and what role you have in that suffering through your thoughts, emotions, and actions. If you're not participating in the suffering of others, in what ways are you working to reduce that arbitrary, unnecessary, and ultimately manufactured suffering? Being aware that the wholesale abuse and slaughter, for example, of animals for human consumption is brutal and taking steps to reduce your contributions to evil is far better than deliberately remaining oblivious or apathetic or in favor of a particular brand of evil. 
one does not have to be a seasoned abolitionist if they have the sincere thought to act in the moments that beckon their morality. You do not have to save the world, you just have to save yourself per se. The thoughts that count are the ones that will get you to that sacred and inevitable place. Thank you for your consideration. This is an article again written for EvolvingSeeds.com and sent for TheLiberator.us. That's this publication, this video that you're watching right now. You can send your article, I'll turn it into a video for you. If you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes not truth, it becomes politics. And politics, politicians are often associated with liars, people who do put on that mask, who are just taking those pre-packaged lies and they're packaging it in so many different ways every single day to try to get your vote, to get your voice as your vote. They're trying to deceive you. They're trying to get you to put yourself in a box, to put yourself in an ideology, to put the world in a box with a certain law and a certain structure. It can't be done. Answer these questions I'll put on the screen for you. I know this has been a whole video really about checking yourself and your own thoughts, but that's what matters. If, if it's the thought that counts, what are you really thinking? right? What are you thinking? Are you thinking thoughts that are destructive or are you thinking thoughts that are actually beneficial? And I know these words are going to be interpreted differently among different people, but most people have a general sense of what is right and wrong. So why do we contradict it with statism, this belief system that is so dangerous, the most biggest religion, the, the, the creator, the root cause of democide, the top cause of unnatural death? I don't want to see it happen anymore. I care about humanity. This is the thought that counts. That's why I don't do this work for money. I do it for you and everybody else. Feel free to share this video. Get involved. We have a bunch of resources. Go to theliberator.us. Thank you very much for watching.